This is Marissa Jerkis, Health Sciences Librarian Liaison for Richardson Library at Hardin-Simmons University. This is part one of three covering ethically sound research practices for the health sciences at Hardin-Simmons University. My contact info is listed here and will be given again at the end. This session we will cover some basic HSU library services, discuss peer-reviewed and scholarly publications, define evidence-based practice, review how to use PICO, review Boolean operators, and conduct some searches utilizing PubMed and Research Roundup, and overview APA citations. At HSU Library, we have several services available. Most frequently used, of course, is our online web presence. Listed here are specific LibGuides for the different health sciences programs. You can make a note of your program's LibGuide now if you would like. These links will be provided in the description below as well. Let's take a look at peer-reviewed or scholarly publications. Here we should note that content experts are those who have researched, studied, and practiced within the field. Please note that using Research Roundup as well as a few other databases have a search feature to allow only scholarly or peer-reviewed journals to be seen when selected. More on that when we get there. If you are using a database without this option and are unsure if a journal is peer-reviewed, you can look up on the journal's website and it should be denoted on the information or about page. Now to be even more specific, let's look at evidence-based practice. Here is how Satchett and others define it. So essentially this means using both what you've learned in clinical work and what your peers and other scholars research say is the best practice to formulate treatment for your patient. So knowing what you're searching for is the initial step to research. Without a proper or formulated question, you can sometimes feel like researching, researching within a database is overwhelming or complicated. So first things first, formulate your research question. Using PICO, we can identify the patient problem, an intervention, a comparison treatment with the intended outcome. Please note that the PICO worksheet is linked down below in the comments. So here we have identified our PICO. Patient is a female in her 30s who has fractured her ankle during immobilization. Our intended intervention is resistance training versus the comparison treatment of electrotherapy with the outcome of strengthening her ankle. Before we dive right into searching the databases, let's take just a few minutes and examine some searching techniques. Boolean operators are useful when wanting to include, include and supplement or exclude information. Looking at this example, we can see that and will return only results that include both peanut butter and jelly or similarly we'll return peanut butter, peanut butter and jelly, as well as jelly results. Not on the opposite end of the spectrum. We'll only return results that mention peanut butter as long as it does not mention jelly. Yes, this is very basic in terminology, but the technique can be transferred to any topic or subject that you are researching. Here are a few more techniques, including using quotation marks, parentheses, and an asterisk. When looking for an exact phrase, for instance, a title or a multi-word name, you can, put in, you can put it in quotation marks so that the database will only return exact matches. For example, if you're looking for electrical muscle stimulation as a phrase, using quotation marks will force the database to only return complete matches. When trying to include multiple Boolean operators, you can use parentheses to do so. Like shown here, open parentheses, fracture or sprain or tear, close parentheses. Root, stem, and trication searching can be helpful, especially when you might be unsure of a spelling or if you want to see what results contain T-H-E-R-A-P in them. 
So therapy, therapist, physical therapy, therapy animal, occupational therapy, many more are returned when the T-H-E-R-A-P asterisk search is done. Please see part two for information on HSU's LibGuide pages and PubMed searching. Again, this is concluding part one of a three-part series for ethically sound research practices.